special guest, Gary Byrne. He's got over 30 years of federal law enforcement. Holy crap, how did you do that? We'll get into that and a lot more questions. And uh, Roger, late oh. to the party as always. Always, always late. Always late to always. the party, so he's coming Best and joining us. So right. guys, you can get your questions in. I'm just changing the camera a little bit. So welcome, Pete. What you got to say? Not much. <laughs> I do. I do have. I'm going to uh, change my outside the waistband single mag pouch design order so it's more compact. I'll show you that in a minute. Thank you. Okay. I can show it. Yeah. Oh. So instead of a single mag with these big ass Mickey Mouse ears. And it takes up a lot of room on your back. I'm going to start taco folding it with one clip. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you tell me one more time what you're doing again? <laughs> I can't. No, can you tell me what kind of fold that is again? This is a taco fold. Oh, a taco fold yes. that I told you to do months ago. Okay. Tell All right. No, I just wanted now to you write. You mentioned in the past three of these. The past Thank three. You. Okay. Actually, you told me years ago. Years ago. Yeah. So he it's, it's, doesn't like tacos. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, it's more compact, one clip, take up less room on your belt, and it's fully adjustable. There it is. And the Glock ones are ambidextrous, so if you're a bullet's forward guy, you can go like that. If you're a bullet's backward guy, you can go like that. You can flip carry positions, you can change it around in different spots. Yeah, so look at, inside the, or look outside. at the difference. Yeah. See? So I mean, you're, you're going to get way better of a product than a more modular product right here. So, yeah. plus, if somebody gets ingenious, they can. Do a lot of different stuff with this. Yes. So, this is solid. Good job, Pete. Thanks. Good job. Yeah, Thanks. you know what? I gotta give you some kudos on that one. Thank you. Yep. Not yeah. giving you any fruity yeah. pebbles. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Oof. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the last last time, wow. too. Yeah. It's getting dangerous in here. He's going to send me a bill for the press for us. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, we got any questions yet? So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Tom, yes, uh, he says thanks for being here, Gary. Some Thank you. questions that we've gotten in already. Um, one statement that you make is patterns of the past to understand the present. I like that statement. Yes. How do we end up here with Joe, <clears throat> you know who, and yeah. his degenerate family? What's your thoughts on that? How did yeah. we get here? So we, we, ended up, we end up here because. Life gets hectic, and so you know, years ago, when when uh, you know, not everything bad in the in this country and in the world started with the Clintons, but a lot of it did. In my, you know, based on what I experienced, but we get complacent, we get used to it. You know, right now, most adult, most young adults, and even people my age, which I'm, I'm closing in on sixty, you know, have a difference of opinion of, about uh, affairs or, or, or that type of thing because we were beat to death with the ideal that it's really not that big of a deal because Bill Clinton did it, mm -hmm. you know, and even to the point where, you know, when people, you don't realize what a psychological effect, effect it has on society when day in and, and day out that you're being told that what Bill Clinton did is not his fault, it's the girl's fault. Mm -hmm. That's really what people end up... To the point of where one of the people that used to defend Bill Clinton all the time, um, his name slipped my mind, it'll come to me as I'm talking, actually said uh, during the, the, the impeachment, said uh, the, that Monica Lewinsky was what you get when you drag a $100 bill through a trailer park. Oh, my question wow. was, Whoa. what's at the other end of the string? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and how come? So, so... We get here because we keep being told if you're a conservative or if you don't particularly if you don't particularly agree with some political view that is not most of the time my experience and I'm not perfect but most of the time is is a liberal view or a democratic view then you're wrong no matter what it is no matter what the subject is and they beat you to death and then they they tag you inadvertently with this ideal that there's something wrong with you mm -hmm. And so that's how we got to the point of it. I'd like to remind you that our president, that, uh, President Joe Biden, had to leave two presidential campaigns back in the 80s because they discovered what is still true, because it never changes. The facts don't change. He's a liar. He, he got caught plagiarizing his entire education record. 
he he lied about his 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 law school. And at this point in his life, where he clearly has some kind of problems with memory, and and you know, I'm not a doctor, but my mother and both my mother-in-law have, have had dementia, and so it looks very similar to that. Um, so this guy is now all those things he was before, and he doesn't function right. And uh, so and so. This is how we get here because we keep breaking down society and, and the golden rules, so to speak. And I'm not saying you listen, I'm not perfect. If anybody that knows me, listen, when I drive down the road, I speed, you know. You know why? <laughs> because I am a cop, and that's the way we drove, or I was a cop, you know. And so, um, you know, I don't run over, you know, puppies with lawnmowers, but I like to hunt. And, and my, I guess my, my point is, is that we get to these points in society because. This, this progressive, here's the, here's, look, I can frame it up really quick here. The word progressive. They keep saying, oh, you gotta be more progressive. What's the end of that? Where does it progress to? What is too right, progressive? Really. What is too progressive? What is too progressive? Let's just say this, let's just talk about this real quick. When it comes to taxes and money, to progressives, taxing, there's never a limit to what you can tax nope. us. So if it's okay to tax everybody that's in this room right now, who are regular Americans, blue collar uh, payroll, and um, if it's okay to tax us to the point of where we have to change our vehicles or our habits to afford the gasoline now, mm -hmm. that less than two years ago was half the price in some places. Oh, well, there's questions about that too. Yeah, so, <laughs> so progressive is, is a bad word because there's no end to it. Because I always said, when somebody would say that, oh, I'm a progressive. To what end? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't see anybody from the Biden family standing at a gas station buying people's gas. I don't see, you know, so anyway. That's well, how we got here. Another question came in go is, uh, what's your take on gas prices? And do you think they will ever go down? No. They, they yeah, so, so they, they could go down. But here's what has to happen. You have to get a, a president in there who will either duplicate what President Trump did, and he's not the first guy to do it, no. but I will tell you something. He understands, you know, whether you, if your feelings are hurt by mean tweets and his brashness, then I will tell you to, you know, put on your big girl pants or whatever and, and toughen up because I will tell you, I would bet you anybody who, who didn't like the way he behaved in public or on social media um, doesn't understand who he really is. And I'll also say anybody that didn't like his behavior or the things he would say to people also is the same person who through your life, you you know, you said to your friends or privately, man, just one time I'd like to tell somebody what my boss what I really think. This guy will tell you what he thinks, he'll write it down for you, and then he'll tweet it to you. <laughs> what, and because he doesn't work for anybody. Yep. And if, you know, so gas prices, what he did was is he made it, he dropped some regulations when he dropped these regulations, the world did get, they get not get more polluted. What they did was they made it easier to do certain things. Um, he made it easier to um, get these pipelines built. Okay, They're going to get built anyway. Let's build them for a little bit cheaper. And here's, here's the thing you have to understand about if you think President Biden's shutting down these pipelines has anything to do with the environment you're insane exactly because right. here's the thing we're still burning the same amount of oil yes. we're paying more for it it's coming by ship the safest way to move oil is by pipeline now is it perfect no everything has an accident it ruptures but the other thing that a lot of people don't understand and again this is because i worked at the white house well this is what you know what i believe i worked at the white house i saw behind the curtain when you when they say we're going to shut down these pipelines blah 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 again i'm like well there's no switch to flip <laughs> yeah, we're not burning less fuel. We're just paying more for it. And have, you know how it's coming? Mm. It's coming by rail car. What rich Democrat owns more, owns an entire rail company? Norfolk, mm. uh, not Norfolk Southern. Uh, what's the one out west? Mm. Mm. Anyway, the biggest, one of the biggest Democratic donors owns the rail companies. The, the, what's the guy's name? Oracle, of, the big investor, Warren Buffett. So, people are so, so if you want to, if you're a Democrat or progressive, and you want to keep Warren Buffett's 
money coming in and these other liberals, you're going to make sure they can get as much oil in their rail cars as you can. Mm -hmm. It's not about the environment. We're not burning less. No. And I also like to remind everybody that the United, every car in the United States of America has a catalytic converter on it. Don't ask me the exact science. Not, not every car right now because they're being they're stolen. stolen. Oh, well, <laughs> except for the people around Philly. Yeah, they are yeah. They are stealing them. It's nonstop. It's unbelievable because there's precious, precious metals in them. And, uh, but um, so anyway, uh, a catalytic converter, again, don't ask me exactly how it works, but it basically takes the exhaust and through a chemical reaction, reduces it to not much more than water comes out of the exhaust of your car now. Ooh. So, and, and uh, we don't have them on diesels because there's less diesels, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, diesel trucks. But um, every car has them. And, um, you know, the United States gets blamed for a lot of stuff. And we're not doing it. The, the ocean pollution. Mm -hmm. China and India. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Or Asia and India. You know, that's where all, the, all their harbors are full of debris. You go, go to one of our harbors, there's some 60-year-old man driving a 40-foot boat that scoops trash up off the surface of the... You know what I mean? So... So, do I believe gas prices will come down? Yes. But do I, can they? Yes. But you have to make it easier for these oil companies. And all this, when people, you hear people say, oh, we're subsidizing them. We're? Who's we? I'm not. <laughs> yeah. You got, I mean, we are, some, but who writes the laws? Like when you hear, here's a complete insanity thing. You hear Bernie Sanders say, rich people don't pay enough taxes. My first question is, how long have you been in Congress? What bill did you try to pass? Did you, did you write mm -hmm. to change that? None. 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 Uh, uh, dead air. Because they, they say whatever will trigger you. Mm -hmm. Donald, uh, Harry Reid, who left the Senate, what, five years ago? Um, when Trump started running, walked into the Senate and said, I have it on good authority from somebody who knows that Donald Trump has to pay taxes in 10 years. And never explain. And then later on, just short, not too long ago, he admitted publicly that he it was a complete lie. <laughs> so he was never censured. He's a senator lying in the house in the Senate, and people just ate it up. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing: I don't care what you pay in taxes. I don't care. It's none of my business. I know what I have to pay. If you're Jeff Bezos and you own, and I'm no fan of his. And you own Amazon, and people say, oh, he didn't pay any taxes in America. It's not possible to own what he owns and not pay taxes. He might not be paying them like you and I, but he's got a yacht bigger than my block that I live <laughs> yeah. on. So I guarantee he's paying taxes on the fuel. There's 60 people that, are, that he hired to run that yacht for him. Just the yacht. Just the yacht. <laughs> you know, not including all the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So don't get wrapped up around that. I think if someday we get another politician, maybe Mr. Trump, who will make it easier and keep gas cheap because that's the that's the smart thing to do. You cannot expect people who are are, are working, uh, you know, from paycheck to paycheck, which is a lot of us. Now it's a little different for me now because I'm retired, um, but um, but I am technically on a fixed income, and um, so. But for, for a lot of people that are just starting out out there, it's horrendous for them. And the problem is, is you, you the, the American public, does not, you, when, you, when they say this crazy stuff, you want to believe them. And it's not real. It's not. Bernie Sanders pays, I pay more in taxes than he does. But he's set up that way. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. He can afford it. He's a millionaire bashing other millionaires and billionaires. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, anyway, go ahead. What's the next one? Um, so, any new books on the horizon? No. Thank you for Come that question. Come on! So, okay, so here's the thing. I'm and saying, what's the next topic? Yeah, right? so I'm saying, I'm saying no. Um, it probably won't happen, but there's two. So, there's, there's two or three. So, when the second book came out, Secrets of the Secret Service... Uh, one of my air marshal buddies called me up and said, you know, first he called me with some really bad names. Yeah. Hurt my feelings a little bit. Yep. But uh, anyway, he said, "Why you need to write a book, you know, Secrets of the Air Marshal Service. I said, well, the problems are pretty similar because the, air, the new Air Marshal Service after 9-11 was basically started out by and managed by former Secret Service agents. So, you know, they brought the same VD management stuff, you know, the same... Uh, diseased Secret Service management style to the air marshals. It's like BD. You can't, you know, it's horrendous. But anyway, 
Um, spreading. Yeah, it spreads <laughs> easy. And so, so, but, but if I did do another book, that would be one to look at. Mm-hmm. Is basically Secrets of the Air Marshal Service, and it would be very contemporaneous because I get a lot of messages from people that are still working and uh, and who have worked. And there's been a couple stories that have come out, and I would use those as a as an amble, you know, and, and to 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 show you know just the the stupid mentality of the government agencies. And, and just to say this real quick, you know, the reasons I wrote Secrets of the Secret Service and I would write anything else about the, a government agency is because we get the ideal because of TV and movies that, you know, the Secret Service is this magic agency mm-hmm. and they can save anybody. Four people were assassinated, were shot at in open vehicles before John Kennedy's killed in Dallas. So how stupid are we? Or smart are we? You know, Ronald Reagan gets shot by John Hinckley in an unsecured crowd. A few years before, when Jerry Ford was president, it happened two times in 14 days, and they were both women. So, again, are we, you know, so I'm not, you know, I'm not bashing individual humans in the Secret Service or any law enforcement. I was one of them. They're doing a great job. But when you get in these agencies, they have all the problems of the IRS and the Postal Service. Nobody gets, nobody ever blinks an eye about bashing those guys. Mm -hmm. But that's the truth. All government agencies are like that. Very few, you know, Mm -hmm. so... Talking about the air marshals, what is one of your most memorable moments? Someone would like to know. Uh, funny or? Both. Let's do both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'll tell you just some funny ones. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you one that actually didn't happen to me, and then I'll tell you one that did, and then I'll tell you something funny. <laughs> the one that didn't happen to me was my, my, two of my coworkers. Um, they were flying from, the mission goes from, Actually, it happened to four of my coworkers. The mission f- goes from Philadelphia Airport to Amsterdam. They land in Amsterdam. They s- spend a day, you know, like an air marshal day, which is about no le- no more than 12 hours, and mm-hmm. there's another flight. And then they get on a plane, and they fly to Mumbai, India. Mumbai, India. Yeah. They stay in Mumbai, India a little more than an air marshal day. <laughs> They're probably there... 25 hours, maybe close to 30. And then they fly back to Amsterdam. They stay another, you know, 12 hours, whatever it is, the next flight, maybe a whole day. And then they come back to Philly. So they're, they take off from Mumbai on the return flight to Amsterdam. And um, while they were on the ground, there was a little confusion with some, with some cargo. And, you know, the pilot said it delayed him a couple minutes, but he apologized and it was all. So they're in the air now, and they're, Hurling through the sky. This is the way. If you if you have issues with flying, like fear, I apologize. So, <laughs> but I I make I make humor of you know. So we're hurtling through, the, the, they're hurling through the air in this pressurized tube of pain, and um, you know, it designed by brilliant people, put together by high school dropouts like me or high school graduates like me. But anyway, so, um, so a flight attendant walks back to my buddy who's the team leader. She walks up. She says, oh, good to see you. She taps him on the shoulder, and she leans over, and she sticks a note in his hand, his open hand. And he takes the note, you know, and waits as she walks away, and he waits a minute, and he looks around. Nobody's paying attention. He opens the note and looks at it. It says, there was confusion with the cargo. They have loaded a pallet on that has a suspicious package that a dog identified may be bombed. So, and then it says, please come up and see the pilot. So, he, he stands up, he laughs, this, and this guy, he's, he's a tough dude, man. He's a good, good human being. And uh, he walks up to, as he's going up to the flight deck, uh, one, they have one of his, his partner in that part of the plane and, and a good friend of his and everybody's, he, you know. He hands him the note, and he reads it. He goes, "Oh, nice." Oh. <laughs> and 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 uh, this other person. Well, I'll call him Fred. Fred says to the other guy. He says, uh, "Fred says, uh, hey, you know what country we're actually over right now?" He goes, "No." He goes, "Look out the window. That's Iran." So he's like, "Oh, this is getting better." So he goes up to the flight deck. Pilot says, um, "What do you think?" He goes. 
what do I think? <laughs> I, you know, oh, we have to just, you know, he goes, what do you think? He goes, well, we can't land right now because we're over Iran. <laughs> And, you know, do I divert? Do I draw attention? You know, I'm not, he goes, we're working on it. You know, they're, they're, they're still working on stuff on the ground. And don't get me wrong, if I'm making the pilot sound like, he, you know, that he's indecisive, he's, they're not. He's not. He's trying to work No, through. they're not. And he's, you know, he wants the input from the marshal, from the air marshal. So my buddy tells him, listen, whatever you want to do, we'll do. He goes, it's in the cargo bay. So I forget exactly what plane they were on, but it was either, it was probably a 777. And it's possible to get to the cargo bay from the interior of the plane, but it is not easy. And you have to be really small. So, but it's- We're not making it. But no, and, and most of the people that <laughs> do what I did aren't either. Yeah. yeah, listen, if I was to tell you that I was the biggest air marshal, I'd be lying, I'm, I'm not. You know, and, but I mean, not, not all of them are big guys, but you know, so anyway. So, but getting into the cargo to look around is, is pretty much not gonna happen. And, and so, um, so the, then the pilot says, okay, you know, this is what we're working on the communication. So anyway, my buddy goes and sits back down because he doesn't want to alert anybody. Because it's not easy for an air marshal to move around the plane without people noticing, especially sure. going up on the flight deck. The flight crew was, when my friend went up to the front of the plane to go into the flight deck, the flight crew knew exactly what to do without even being told. They... About three or four of them got in a group. They were doing distracting things. The pilots popped the door open. My buddy slipped it. You know, nobody really saw him. And so, anyway, he comes off the flight deck. He goes and sits back down. On the way back, he stops at the other seat and says to this guy. And then my buddy says, so what are we going to do? He goes, he says, you know, I've known you a long time. You're not deeply religious, but you might want to start. He goes, because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to start praying. You know, because we, but you know, we, uh, what, uh, the other thing I'm trying to tell you is, is we have a dark sense of humor, like a lot yeah, of law enforcement, sure. military, and so you know he just you, nobody takes that job. It's it's like you know it's like being the cruise director on a cruise ship. Oh my God, there's turbulence. You know, there's the the seas aren't always flat. You know, or yeah. you know, flying on a plane. What do you mean there's turbulence? It, you have to understand what it is you're doing and realize that's gonna that could happen. And so anyway, so um, they're in the air another forty minutes, and he's like, well. Um, you know, when he's looking at this, um, the, uh, the airline they're flying, there's a screen and it tells, it, you can push a button and it tells you what shows you where the plane is on the map. And he goes, well, so we're not gonna let it go off over Iran and here's a good place because you can never find, you know, it's in the mountains, blah, blah. And so then all of a sudden the flight attendant comes back and says, hey, come back up to the flight deck. He's like, okay. So he goes up there and he, they said, okay. And he hands him another note, he goes, I wrote the note, and then I just asked him to bring it up. He reads the note, and he starts laughing. He goes, perfect. Not only did they, were they mistaken, that the pilot that was on the plane, there was no issue with it. Yeah. They identified, they contacted the wrong airplane. Oh. Oh, oh man. So there was another airplane out there. And, but there was no issue. Right. So, Thank God. Yeah, so... <laughs> So oh. my yeah so my yeah so anyway that's, that's a lot of poker facts so <laughs> yes. so exactly. probably a, probably a week went by when um, when I, after I, you know I heard that story I ran it, we were in training together and uh, they were telling me that story I'm like I am never getting on a plane with you guys Gosh, <laughs> damn. you know so but anyway uh, so funny uh, God there's so many funny things. Um, uh, okay, I worked with this woman, uh, we'll call her Chica, and <laughs> Chica is, for lack of a better description, she's, you know, part Hispanic, and she talks in what I call Spanglish. She can have a conversation with me in English, be talking to her girlfriend and her sister on two different phones in one, in Spanish, and never miss a, comp you know, she's funny as hell. Anyway, so we are... Up front, now, she's in the back of a, on, on a plane. I'm up front. We're going overseas. There's multiple teams of two. And she, uh, we get on the plane, and um, she's in the back. The passengers come on. This lady sits down two seats over. Marie, uh, Chica, excuse me, I just said her real name. That's all right. <laughs> Chica's, on the, Chica's on, the, uh, on the aisle, right? And then next to her is this young kid, and then this mother, and then two more kids. So before the plane even gets in the air, the mother, 
takes a sedative, washes it down with Jack Daniels. Oh, good. But has a gives the kids a bag of like soda and candy, oh. and they eat it all the way across to England. Now the flight to England <laughs> probably takes between six and seven hours, you know. So just before they land, and, and the whole time the flight attendants having to correct these kids, and they're 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 in the aisles and they're they're harassing Maria, and they're kicking the seat. And they, yeah, Chica, thank you. Yeah, I butchered it anyway. And actually, Maria is not actually her real real name, but that's right. So anyway. Um, so, so they, um, they, the f crew wakes up the mother, like, and they, they're having a hard time waking yeah. her up, and so anyway, she wakes up, and just before the plane lands, the youngest kid that's sitting next to Maria turns to Maria and pukes all over her. Ah! Oh, <laughs> nope. I'm out. Pukes nope. all over her. Now, I don't know anything about this, because I'm up front, <laughs> right, thinking about getting on the ground, getting in the hotel room, uh, getting a nap, a little workout. We're gonna go out to a, a British pub. I'm gonna eat a big giant piece of Scottish beef, barely cooked, and <laughs> drink a couple Guinness, you know? And so that's where my mind is, because yeah. we're almost there. Maria's mind, not so much. So everybody gets off the plane, the passengers, and then, you know, the, my coworkers make their way up. And uh, I'm looking at her, I'm like, Fuck is all over you. She goes, Duke! You know, and I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, and she's just, you know, and at this point, it's also like there's health issues. Yeah, yeah, you don't know. Puke is not, you know, yeah. when our kids puke on us, yeah, right. when my it's friend, if, you know, if, if, if Pete pukes on me, I'm not worried as my yeah. friend. But, but a complete stranger, a kid, you know, and, and um, so anyway. I haven't puked in a long time. Yeah, so, so they, um, I can't say it. So I, I said, I said, Maria, where's your bag? Go up to the front. I said, I'll go talk to the crew. I'll, the, the, I'm sure the pilots will be glad to get off, glad to get off the flight deck. We'll hold up a blanket. You change. She's like, right. just get me to the FN hotel. I said, okay. All right. All right. So we we do what we have to do. We go through customs. Um, you know, when we get to the, the hotel. So we get to the hotel. She goes up and showers, and, and the last time I see her, I said, hey, do uh, you want me to call you for dinner? She turned around, and she goes, the first human that makes contact with me in the next 10 hours, I'm going after. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, so I'll see you in the morning. Guinness so, alone. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, you know, she uh, she did go out to dinner with us, and she did recover pretty quick, but it did freak her, and freak her out. Yeah. So, yeah. And the yeah. good thing is there's thousands of Marias, so no one's going to know. No, there are a lot of Marias. <laughs> So. What do you got? What do I got? <laughs> All right. So, Mr. Byrne, thank you for your faithful service to our nation. While at FAMS, did you ever shoot the triple nickel? Yes. So, the triple nickel is, um, so it is uh, five yards. Do you guys know what this is already? So, know. okay. First of all, I'm going to tell you who invented the triple nickel. Now, there's a lot of people out there that will claim they invented it. And, and I might not actually have it exactly right, but the guy who... I know who invented it, like who, the first guy I ever saw do it, and I pre was pretty sure he invented it, his name is Kelly Venden. Now I'm using his real name because he also owns a uh, training company. He is a former Delta Force operator, and if you watch the History Channel, there's a History Channel uh, video, a documentary of the, um, during the Grenada invasion, we rescued a businessman that was being held, really? Delta, Delta did, and one of the helicopters got shot down, and as it was going down to the ground, Kelly fell out, and the helicopter landed on his ankle, broke his ankle. <laughs> but he's fine. That's so, luck. Kelly Vanden is the first guy I saw do this, and uh, it's five yards, it's five targets, you're standing in the, in the middle of one, two, three. Mm -hmm. So you're standing in the middle, five yards, five, five human silhouette targets. Um, now, I'm not sure what size target is supposed to be. I always saw it shot at a pretty small target for, mm -hmm. for federal aviation. Um, they may have done it on the bigger one, but anyway. So, uh, for federal law enforcement, I meant to say. So, anyway, five targets, five yards, uh, five seconds. One bullet, boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts on the beep. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I, I practiced it by just, you know, coming out of the holster and blah, blah, blah. So I, I had, was practicing it without any time for on and off once in a while. I shot it. So to make it official, I never shot it. I never did it right officially. Uh, to make it official, you have to do one right after the other. You have to do it twice. Okay. So pretty much, I forget, there is a timeline. But basically for, for when I saw it done, it was just how long it took you to load your magazines or to pick up the magazines that you, you know, that you're already loaded. Yeah, you know? right. So, right. yeah. So, um, the funny thing about it is, it is hard to do, but it's like anything else. When you start doing it, it ain't that hard. Yeah. We, uh, when I joined the Secret Service, you had to learn to shoot five rounds in 10 seconds twice. Two strings of five rounds in 10 seconds. When I first time I did that, I would, I would have told you that I, we, we turned it into a machine gun. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I might be able to do more than 10 rounds in 10 seconds. Yeah. And, and accurately, you know. So, but anyway. But, um, so, that's what the triple nickel is. Um, I don't know if it was ever made official. The problem with any really hard shooting thing inside the air marshals, and now the Secret Service, is the gunslingers, the old gunslingers of the Secret Service are... If they have hair left, it's gray. They, you know, the, 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 these guys, these were the guys that were on the original Secret Service pistol team and did nothing but travel around and practice and shoot. And they were unbelievable. And so that, that, is, that was killed by Secret Service management because technically they couldn't do it because they weren't uniform division. And so, um, and when they did try to let agents train with them, they were so far behind the training curve that they looked ridiculous. But mm. with that said, the triple nickel is a really good thing to, tr to practice. Again, five targets, um, five yards, five, five yards, five targets. And uh, you know what? If you're practicing it, use as big a target as you want. And then just yeah. and then just slowly shrink it down as you get. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they officially, they did use like a pack timer. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, because the, the targets would have to spin so fast, five seconds, you know. Mm -hmm. Even the, the high-end moving targets that we had, I don't, you know, it probably takes a, mm -hmm. three quarters of a second yeah, to turn. Yeah, probably three quarters yeah, of a second. Yeah, so anyway. Yeah, good course. I will tell you, um, practice it, practice it, practice it, practice it. If you never get it, keep practicing it because you will make you a better shooter like most things. Oh, yeah. Like most mm -hmm. things. So anyway. All right, so uh, another question is, do Secret Service agents prefer working for a Republican administration, or is it even discussed? Okay, so <laughs> yes and no, and I'm going to come down on both sides of that, and I'm going to tell you what the, what the real truth is. So officially, when, you're, when you go to join, or actually during your interview, one of the first things they bring up is, listen, you got to learn to leave your politics at home. Now, I'll tell you that's easier said than done. Sure. You know. But um, most people do. A lot of my experiences, a lot of people uh, in the Secret Service seem to be conservative. That's not unusual for law enforcement, military. Some aren't. I did see a couple examples of when it went overboard. And I wasn't there for one, but I was there. So the first one I know of is a uniform division guy who um, years ago, back in the 70s, just couldn't turn his politics off. And he worked at the White House. He was in the uniform division. Anyway, there was some something going, some group of you know politicians, governors, and congressmen were there. Anyway, um, he decided to just, everybody he saw come in to stop them and tell them that if they don't help make Teddy Kennedy president of the United States, that they should, you know, not exist. And he just, it just went on and on for like, until somebody had to, they basically had to drag this guy out of the room. <laughs> so that was one. And then years ago, uh, when I first started at the White House, George Herbert Walker was president. Bush was president. And um, his, uh, so I started in 90, summer of 91. And so I, I protected him for about two years. You know, Bill Clinton won that, that election. It would have been uh, Bush's, Papa Bush's second term. He lost that election. And so... Um, there was this young, this woman. Um, there's not a lot of women in the Secret Service. Uh, there's probably more now. But um, she was great. 
I never met a woman in that job that I couldn't find something I liked about them. You know, there's just, it just takes a special person to join the boys club. Absolutely. Because that's what it was. I'm not saying it, it should be. No. I'm telling you that's what it was. So, um, anyway, she was born in Northeast, uh, not Northeast, yeah, up in Massachusetts somewhere, or she was, her whole family were Democrats. They were all, you know, she was, and to the, this is the first time, and I was new, so it's the first time I ever heard anybody start discussing politics, like we're standing close together, I'm like, uh, <laughs> you know, I couldn't get away, and, and she was very nice, but she was hammering the Bush family. And all kinds of shit, and, and you know, and so, I, you know, whatever, I let her have her say, and, and uh, I said nothing. And, and um, so I put, I move, I, my post, I, I move before, we, the agents and officers that are on post together, they, they don't move at the same time, you know, I'll move 15 minutes before them, or the agents will move, you know, before them, whatever. So I, I push post, and, and um, she's still there, and... I guess at some point she's rattling on to the next person and a staff member comes out and like nobody knows that they're out, which is really unusual. But anyway, they he overhear her and they, you know, pursue it. And uh, so I didn't know anything about it. And like, I don't know, two days later, I come into work. I don't, I'm pretty much brand new. And the sergeant comes over. He goes, hey, I'm going to need a memo from you. I'm like, okay. For what? <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, oh, shit. Like, what did I do? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at my uniform. And I, you know, so, Everything straight. Yeah, <laughs> gun, baton, <laughs> a badge. You know. So he goes, uh, the incident, you know, out on the South Lawn the other day. I'm like, there was no incident. He goes, yeah, the uh, agent was saying something negative about the Bush family. I go, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really sure what you're talking about, you know. And he's like, uh, this agent so and so. I said, well, I'm brand new here. He goes, well, I need a memo. I go, well, okay, I, I don't have anything to tell you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He goes, well, then you need to do a memo that says that. And again, I was really new. So I'm like, eh, you know, okay, what did she really say? I'm not really, in a, you know, this is not my thing. It's not yeah. my business. It's not stupid. And, you know, did she take a swing at them? I don't know. I mean, so. So I did a memo, and it said, um, and because I, I asked him, I said, what day was that? You know, I had to have some of the particulars, and I said, on this particular day and time, I don't really remember anything that concerned me in a discussion with anybody I work with that day. That's pretty much what it said. So he got all pissed off, and yeah, that was that. And then, uh, But they transferred her just to, like, the transportation side. <laughs> so she was still protecting the bushes, but she was riding on a C5 next to a limousine going... <laughs> you know, all over the world yeah so but anyway so so you're not supposed to discuss it it is hard I was incredibly naive when I started working and um, the Clintons cured me of that so <laughs> <laughs> they cured you of a lot of things huh? alright so we have another question in um, what gun surprised you that you never thought you would carry your own so what weapon did you think wasn't going to be great, but then when you had it, handled it, shot it, you really liked it? Hmm, okay. That's actually an excellent question. And I think it actually is a, uh, it's a lever action 22 Marlin that I, I only bought. <coughs> I bought it. It was the first gun purchase I ever did. Now, by this time, so I'm in the Secret Service. I'm working in training. I'm an instructor, and one of the guys I worked with is selling this rifle that was his childhood rifle that his kids didn't want or something. Anyway, it was this simple 22, the 22 Marlin lever action. I forget what model number it is, but it chambers every 22 long, short, the little That's bitty, nice. the little bitty ones, the yeah. rat. Yeah, it is a great. So I only bought it because the guns that I had, I said I hadn't bought any yet were guns that were issued to me. And then from the time I started in the Air Force, anybody that I knew or was related to who had guns and thought they were going to die soon gave them to me. I have a lot of guns that I paid nothing for that people gave me. And they're all really great firearms. Mm -hmm. And they all work and they're all functional. And some of them are... are anyway, so um, so this 22 Marlin, and I had it for like, I don't know, five, six, seven years. 
And when I started teaching my son to shoot and my daughter, and they were four years apart, Ethan was like five or six, he lives four years old. That's what I started with. Yeah. And man, is it is that a good because you you know you you can't accidentally rack it. Yep. You can't. It's heavy, but it's not real heavy. Mm-hmm. It's safe. You know. There's anyway. So. Uh, it's fun. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. And I would tell you that I yeah, play with it. Expensive. Yeah. No, it's yeah. not. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that 12, 2022 pricing, yeah. that it's through the roof. Yeah, Ooh. so, um, yeah, so I, that's the gun. That's the gun. I, and to this day, I still, whenever I get a chance that I'm going to go shoot, and I take it with me and I shoot, I plink with it. I do all kinds of stuff. Um, the, the guy that owned it before me, uh, God bless him, he passed away years ago. But anyway, uh, the rear sight is bugger. He, he broke it off as a kid, and when they fastened it back on, it's accurate, but it's canted to the right. <laughs> so, so it cut, you know, you just have to, you have to know. look at center the notch and line the post up, and you're you're, you're good. You're good. But if you hand it to somebody no, else, that uh, I have a 30 caliber <laughs> carbine the same way. Yeah. yeah so, anyway, yeah. Um, so, Pete had, uh, when he heard that question, he asked me to ask you if you are still in the closet with your high points. <laughs> Still in the closet at my high point. Ouch. Uh, with, yeah, so that came, with, that came from Pete. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. I, I, thought I, missed, I thought I missed something. It's a yeah. funny. Yeah, I do have some memory issues recently, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I owe anybody money, I paid you. <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, Roger was supposed to come up with the... Uh, Worst Springfield armory. I'm right? still working still on that. Working I on have that? about yeah. three that I have, and okay. I, I really want to get the worst one in. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Yeah, right. we're, so we're almost there. Show. Um, so another question, and the food for today, I just got a note that it was delivered, so if you want to go grab it and bring it out here so we can show everybody what real pizza looks like. I could do that. That would be awesome. He's not getting up. That's what I do. I know. It's food. Um, so if you, you want, want to do that. Okay. Oh, are you going to get? Uh, Pete, I do have a quick we know you're not getting off. Sure. Can you sure. make a uh, holster for the HKP30 or the Beretta PX4? HKP30 or the Beretta PX4? Yeah, yeah, I just did a Beretta PX4, yeah. but it had to be dropped off because I don't have a mold for it. Right. So do me a favor. Um, I can't say your name on there. Or something, something, eight oh nine. Send an email into Pete at info at Armor Guard Holsters, and we'll talk to you about that. Um, Anyway, so another question for you, my friend, is what is your favorite go-to caliber? Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll assume they just mean for, like, a tool carry or um, whatever. Yeah, I'm guessing yeah. for handguns. You know what? So I have... We don't need that. I have an answer, and then I have a philosophy. The answer, I'll say, is, is uh, just go-to is 9 millimeter. Mm-hmm. Um... Years ago, when I was a young guy learning to be an instructor in the Secret plates. Service. You guys talk amongst yeah. yourselves. <laughs> Years ago, when I was in the Secret Service as a young instructor, I made the mistake of saying something about 9 millimeters known for not being powerful enough. And my friend turned to me and said, hey, 9 millimeters has been killing people for 115 years. Or no, actually what he said was, 9 millimeter at this point in history has been stopping bad, stopping bad from happening for 115 years. And I said, well, you know, you're absolutely right. And what a lot of people don't know is the 9 millimeter. It's, it's gotten a little bit better today because loaders are loading it the way the Germans designed it to be. 9 millimeter is actually a hot load. You know, it's, it's, it's more powder in it than we normally would, would uh, typically put in it. So both the agencies that I work for, the Secret Service and the Air Marshals, have gone to 9 millimeters. They've gone to Glocks, the Model 19 mm-hmm. primarily. Um, that's my go-to, I would say, but I am fine. Here's my philosophy. When people say, what's the best gun in caliber? The one that's in my hand, ready to go when, when I need it. Yeah. When I need to defend somebody, that's the one. And, and, and you know, don't get me wrong, I realize they don't float around and we just pull them in there. <laughs> but, but, but what I mean by that is, 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 is if you carry uh, 380, like I do a lot, just make sure you're accurate. Practice with it, yeah. no matter what it is. Even if you, you know, I once helped a, a woman that was in a wheelchair. She was 70-some years old, had been in a wheelchair most of his life, was almost completely blind. I helped her be safer with the revolver that she kept under her leg her whole life to protect herself. And now she was, when I say she was legally blind, there, uh, that doesn't mean you can't see anything. Sure. 
you, you, you know, so it was a revolver, it was a snub nose. She would not let her family take it from her because she wasn't going to. So I helped her with some safety stuff. First of all, I got a holster for her because... Under the leg. Her leg not. was, yeah, no. yeah, so many no. years, it changed, it took the bullying off the gun. <laughs> wow. So, but it was, uh, you know, I took the gun, I, I, I shot it, I cleaned it, I took it to somebody who really was an armorer, and they said, there's nothing wrong with this gun. Took it back to her, and I said, listen, this, you know, this is what I keep in this holster, this is how we'll fasten it to the chair, blah, 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 you can still have it under your leg. And I said, you know, sh you know, I said, if you, if, if, if somebody, if you feel like you're in danger and you can touch them, can you see them well enough to identify friend or foe? She said, yes. I said, well, then there you go. I said, you just have to practice. You gotta get somebody to take you to the range and practice to make sure that you pull that arm back before you fire. Yep. That's all. Mm -hmm. Or if they, if they're coming, and I also taught her this, and I, I, and I only thought about it when I was there with her. She was, as old as she was, she was, you know, you can imagine how well you can move a wheelchair when you've been in a long time. Mm -hmm. She could really move forward fast. I said, well, if you think you're in danger and they're coming towards you, then close the distance, ram them with the chair. Mm -hmm. You're going to take them off balance, and then they're on top of you. Mm -hmm. And then you can, if you, you know, you can do all kinds of things. Push them off, whatever. And then you, you're going to know for sure a friend or foe. And, she, and, you know, she said, well, you know, I thought of that one time. And, you know, so anyway. So my point is, is... Whatever you have about, whatever you're going to use, practice with it. Uh, even if it's a 22, and and do I listen? I'm not saying that I would use a 22 for everyday carry, but if that's the only thing I had, hey, I yeah. absolutely would. Yeah. And and if somebody asked me to train them to use it, I would. I would never turn somebody down. No. From carrying a 22. No, I would not. I, I mean, do you want to get shot in the eyes with one? No. No. You don't. There's I a, don't. No. But so you're 100 percent yeah, correct in what so, you're saying. Yeah. The training is the big part of it. It's not it just is. buying the gun, right? You know, putting the picture on Instagram that you bought a gun, great yeah. for you. But it's you need to practice and you need to train. Yeah. And it, yes. With reputable people. Right. And find uh, find them. Now, now you may have a problem finding a holster for some 22s, but that's when you contact Pete. There is a guy. Yes. <laughs> there is There's a guy there that is we a guy. know. There's always a guy. Yeah, somebody's got a guy. Yeah, yeah. But Sometimes there's a guy. girl, but there's a guy involved. Yeah, but there's a guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. I, and I've seen some holsters. And um, so, the, you know, when it comes to caliber, um, I'll say one more thing and I'll stop my yapping, <laughs> is the some 22s and actually 380s, 32s, 25s, it's not the caliber that I would say is the issue. Some of them are so small that it's not impossible to find a holster because you can always buy just a sleeve, right? Yeah. But um, they're so small and light that if you haven't been used to carrying, you forget you have yeah, it. Yes. Right. Or you forget it in your bag. And, and right. so, and, and, and it's just a cautionary tale. Just practice with it, remind yourself, you know, and- uh, Take I, it seriously. Yeah, that's right. It is, listen, Carrying a firearm is can be just as dangerous as dropping your foot on the accelerator in, in front of a, a crowd of people. Yep. You know, you just you got to realize physics, the physics of firearms, um, uncontrolled and not accurate is bad. So just like with cars. You know. So anyway. Practice, practice. Yeah. All right. So there is another question that came in. <laughs> Secret Service seems to be under investigation due to foreign intrusion. Is this true, and is it pervasive? Yeah, so I, I do think it's true. Uh, it's not the first time. Um, so let's start with why you know about this. And what I mean by that is, is um, the Secret Service used to be part of the Treasury Department. And one of the best things the Treasury could do was to keep the Secret Service's name out of the paper. <laughs> so now it's part of Homeland Security and you know if if um, the Treasury Department was a was a bottle with one or two holes it might lead the mm -hmm. Homeland Security is a friggin screen door right mm -hmm. so I'm not saying it's okay to hide this stuff what I'm saying what I what I saw you know so um, yeah, I believe it's real. Uh, and the way to gauge it when you hear something about that is, is to go online and see, you know, go on the Secret Service's webpage 
and see what the replies are to the questions. <laughs> and the ones they ignore and the ones they give you some kind of like diluted, you know, oh, there's always accusations about that. It's real. <laughs> so, you know, and, and um, so anyway, yeah, so it's real, um, but it's, oh, so what it revolves around is access to the White House. And that's always been a problem. When you work at the White House in the Secret Service, or, okay, when you're in the Secret Service, and then if you work at the White House or inside Washington, D.C., you pretty much have unfettered access to the White House. Nobody questions, you know. Yeah. And, and, and I tell you, we, we sometimes take advantage mm -hmm. of it. I myself did too. Now, it didn't blow up in my face, but it could have. But it wasn't like, I wasn't, I snuck my friend's wedding party into the White House. <laughs> well, the only weddings that are supposed to be at the White House are supposed to be the first family. Sure. <laughs> anyway, so setting that aside, um, so yeah, so these guys, these 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 bad actors that were portraying themselves as federal agents, um, and the first report I heard was they were trying to pretend they were FBI agents. And of course, as soon as the story broke, the FBI squashed that. Now, I don't know if I'm 100% accurate, but I do know they were portraying themselves as federal agents. Yeah, I read FBI and right. I think DHS or something. Right, the right. Yeah, so do not put it past any law enforcement agency to take the story and change to another agency. <laughs> they went up, yeah, duh. Yeah, so. Oh, Spider Man's going like this. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> They're like the Spider Man, yeah. yeah. So, so, um, so access to the White House can cause you to, to have a brain fart. It, it is intoxicating. And uh, when you work at the complex like I did in the Secret Service, when I say unfettered, you literally have a key that will let you have access to that complex that it's only monitored by a camera. And in some cases, it's not even monitored by a camera. Now, these are emergency things that are set up, but anyway. So, um, these guys were portraying themselves as federal agents. They, they befriended these guys, they did, I can tell you right now how it started out. Hey, we're from so-and-so, do you know so-and-so? Oh yeah, you know, oh, I know so-and-so in that agency, and then they went out and had a beer, they had lunch, and then they did something together, and then they, the guys that are trying to, the, the bad actors, do something. And they do something in a way that makes you in, sort of indentured to them. Like you like them or you feel like you owe them something. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, hey, my sister-in-law is coming in. <laughs> they want to get pictures. <laughs> from, you know, Orlando. And uh, would it be a problem? Uh, no, no, sure, no. I just It's just one thing, you know, it's... Uh, you know, it's her whole family, and you know, her whole family. Yeah. Yeah. it's thirty-four people yeah. coming, and they're all the bus will be pulling up. Yeah, they're all males from you know, the age of seventeen to uh, twenty-eight. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> so so I don't know what these guys were doing. I yeah. don't know. Maybe they were just doing an embarrassment thing. Crazy. Who knows? So, oh, you're cold now. Um, it was hot. But the, you know, the Secret Service is not perfect. Right. And then when you the, one of the big their biggest problems, and then I'll stop talking here, is fatigue. I don't care what the service tells you. I don't care what any congressman tells you. I am telling you that fatigue is usually the first thing you need to look at because they're exhausted. I don't care what anybody tells you, they're exhausted. They work those people to death. And the other thing too is, is when I came on in 91, hardly anybody ever quit. I swear to God, I was the first year I was there, I heard about an agent that was quitting in Seattle. Why would I hear about that? Because right. nobody quit. Wow. Well, that was a, you were in it until retirement. Yes. Back then. That nobody in the uniform job. division left. And then when I transferred to the air marshals, the day I left, and I was an instructor, the, the special agent in charge of training informed me that in the previous three years, we had trained 315 uniform division officers. And when I walked out the door, that, that's a net gain of three. That's how many had left. Wow. Air marshals. wow. So this it's one of the things I point out in my uh, second book, Secrets of the Secret Service. Listen to the story with their telling. You know, when something comes out, it leaked out or they didn't want it out. They when and if you ever hear the agency say, We're coming forward to be open, that's complete bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's either coming out, it's out, or somebody is forcing them to do it to stop something else worse from happening. So, anyway. Total damage control. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, I hope that answered your question. I got it. Oh, fine. 
Go ahead. It's off topic a little. Do you think uh, Texas is really going to bring those immigrants to D.C.? Well, do I think they want to? Yes. Um, I mean, you think it'll happen? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a logistical but, nightmare. But it is a logistical nightmare. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is, so they're here illegally. Yeah. <laughs> and see, that doesn't really matter in the eyes of the law. When you take custody of them, when you capture them, they're yours. What are they? They're you're yours. responsible, yeah, right? You're, yeah. They're yours. So that bus is going down the road, and Hillary Clinton weaves in front of it in her, in her armored limousine <laughs> and cuts them off, and they wrap. Right she doesn't faint. Yeah, she faints. Yeah. And anyway, so there's an accident on the bus, and they're killed or they're injured. Yeah. So well, not that, they're, not that they're not ours forever already, but. You know, and then so, and who who said that? Who whose responsibility is it? So that's what you got to watch. It's you know, it's uh, um, all right. I don't want to. I have a habit of dragging shit out. I'll stop there. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't think it happened. But if I'm wrong and it does, it'll be funny to watch. Yeah. Well, well but it's good to watch. See, it. it will be funny. But also too, it's real. Yes. And what I mean by that is, is nothing would be, would nothing would be better for the American people than for somebody to be able to drop off 500 of these people in front of Joe Biden's beach house in Delaware. Because then, that, <laughs> then, you're, then you're just stupid decisions and your, your isolation all these years from your dumbass decisions <laughs> has ended. And you see what the ramifications of this stupid shit is, of open borders. Yeah. And just letting people, I'm begging them to come across. For God's sakes, they were handing out Joe Biden t-shirts to people down in El Salvador to, to come to the you know the, the Mexican border, mm -hmm. so you know so that would be great and I would love to see it. But you know, it, but it's a huge responsibility, and they're they're you know the law enforcement agencies are doing it or whoever's doing it. First of all, I think a transportation agency would tell you no. Yeah, absolutely. So, here's, and, a, here's another one. Go ahead. Uh, the four years, what's happened? Um, it just slipped my mind. Go ahead. You're sitting too close to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's because there's yeah. pizza. It's only concerned yeah. with this, I yeah. can promise you. I think my... Uh, I'll give him some light. Hold on. I think my yeah. memory lapses are contagious. The, um, the, the stuff that's happening with the gas and all this. Yes. Um, Biden supporters say, oh, that... And we said, like, all the uh, outside countries are all going crazy. Mm-hmm. All right, and it wasn't like that when Trump was president. Mm -hmm. And they said, Biden supporters say, that was going to happen anyway. It had nothing to do with no. Trump. Yeah. So that's 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 an example of what I was describing before. If I say it enough, it somebody will somebody will <laughs> latch onto it. You're loud. <laughs> somebody will latch onto it, and and they will keep repeating it. Right. You know, the emperor has new clothes on. Yep. The emperor has new clothes on. You know, no, he doesn't. Boom. Oh, the emperor does have new clothes on. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and one of the biggest problems with progressives or, or really far left liberals are is that they don't ever want to go to a party or a gathering or be in front of another liberal and not have a glowing light of anointment in front of them. Mm. <laughs> yes, because that's that who they, that's how they, they portray each other and themselves. I am mm -hmm. much smarter than you and I'm enlightened. I care. Mm -hmm. So, but that's not the way they live their lives. They don't live their policies. They don't. No. Joe Biden does not live any of these policies. He lives in it's gated houses. As I say, not as I do. Right. Yeah. To the to the extreme, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so the the idea that this was going to happen anyway is not true. It's not. If you if water is leaking out of if water is coming out of a faucet and the sink is clogged up and it's spilling into your kitchen. Was it going to happen anyway? No. No, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Guess what else you can do? Turn off the water. Yeah. So let's turn off the... And, and I, you know, it's hard to prove this, but pretty much from the beginning. So right after 9-11, you know, I was in the Secret Service at the time. Right after 9-11, the first thing, you know, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I still think there was smoke coming out of the ground. Like, they, you know, that's how bad it was. I said, we need to shut down our entire immigration process completely, everywhere, for 60, 90 days. We shouldn't let anybody in from, you know, Middle East for a year. Yeah. You know, right. and people did talk about that. 
you know, when it first happened, the gloves were off. The gloves were off. Mm -hmm. The gloves were off. Mm -hmm. Until. <laughs> Trump said it. No, no. No, no. Well, he said it too. Yeah, party. no. He, but, but, you know, after 9-11, the gloves were off. Congress, I, I don't care how far left you were, you know. Oh, yeah. America, America. 60 days later. Oh, whoa. What do you mean? You're, mm -hmm. you're waterboarding them. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, whoa. Frankenstein. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're you're uh, you're making them listen to rock and roll music for two, f ten hours straight. So did I in high school. You know. <laughs> so I got through a lot of it. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so you know that that's the mentality. They they want to look like they're they're hawks want to get reelected, but they're mm -hmm. not. So and, yeah. and a lot. It's just like the rhinos, the the, the Republican in name only. Um, you know, my favorite example is, and, and if you this pisses you off, I apologize. But, uh, you know, John McCain, I get it. He was a war hero. He was uh, um, a POW. But I met John McCain quite a few times when I was working at the White House. And he, he's not like a really charming guy. And he's not real kind. And the truth of the matter is, um, it, to me, my experience, what I saw of him and, and his record, he's, he was one of these guys, and there's a ton of them. And I always point him out because he'll be the most controversial ones. People want to attack me when I go, he's a war hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he is. He is. He, absolutely. You're not attacking the service. No. <laughs> not at all. But, um, you know, he was the, these rhinos, I say they're Republicans for 15 minutes, the year that they need to get reelected. Mm -hmm. They go to gun manufacturers. You see them hold the guns. I forget who it was that I hold the rifle. I'm like, he ain't never seen a gun in his life. <laughs> he looks like he's holding a, a, a friggin', you know, uh, eel. <laughs> you know, he's like, he's like trying to juggle eels. And I'm like, that's a horrendous picture, man. Yeah. Anybody, you know. I wouldn't so, even put that out. <laughs> yeah, because they don't know any better. Because the people right. doing the PR don't know any better. They They're not gun people. Anything. They don't have a clue. So, anyway. Right, exactly. So, right. I hope I answered that question. You did. Okay. You got any more, Pete? I have one. You had one? Cool. All right, we'll go to Roger. Roger, do you I'm have good. any questions? I'm good. Good info. How about this pizza? We'll get to so it. So we'll talk about... That's uh, for after. Talk after. about the yeah, next... Uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh my God, I've got a ton of pizza sitting in here. So just to remind you guys, on April 24th, we're going to do a live cooking video. Ugh. I have no idea what we're cooking. Looking we're for cooking. suggestions. That's going to, and I will not be cooking, just to let you know. So, I will be behind the camera. So I assume it has to be Italian. It will have to be. Yeah. Well, okay, so, so I. So I've made I, my, I, app, my yeah. upside down apple pie. I don't know if you're an apple pie fan, but I have made the upside down look apple at me. pie. I look like I'm not a fan of anything. <laughs> oh my God. So that is really. That's why I never threw up. I consumed. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. So the first thing that popped into my head was steak brujol. Like I'm not even Ooh. sure if that's Italian. Oh, yeah. my, my mother was Lebanese. And my father was Irish. My mother, I swore until I was about eight, I didn't realize that because we were Lebanese, we weren't Italian because of the way my mother cooked. Mm -hmm. You know, she was good. She cooked everything good. Mm. Lebanese food, Italian food, whatever. Mm. You know, so, but anyway, uh, yeah, steak brisol popped into my head. Oh, there yeah. you go. You can do uh, that. Never you know what else I like to? With or without the A. I like, uh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah I'm good with it. I, I like that. You gotta have the egg. Yeah. The hard boiled egg. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you gotta yeah. have the hard boiled egg in there. Uh, so, anyway, okay. So, that will be coming up. And, uh, oh, chitlins and cornbread. Yeah, we'll do the cornbread. No, thanks. Where that's in the right? south do you live? <laughs> Are you in Georgia? <laughs> You're in Georgia. So, on uh, May 1st, we're gonna do a YouTube live, and it will be Gun Store Fails. Yes. <laughs> So uh, I know uh, we are going to have the Willie Windex story in that one. Yeah, um, that's a good one. Gun store fails. Yes, yes. we got plenty of that. Uh, <laughs> oh yes, uh, we have those. So um, I mean, when someone handles a gun dangerously, how do you go about correcting them? So do you yell at them or you say, no? Oh, the first thing I the first thing I well, if I can get away without yelling at them, in other words, the first thing I do is close the gap. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if they're there and they're doing something wrong, I'm probably in charge of it, you know, in, in, in my experience, and I have fucked up. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's going to get accidentally shot, it may as well be me because I should have stopped this in the beginning. 
So, and, 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 and don't think I'm like virtuous or great because I stole that from um, G. Gordon Liddy, the Watergate burglar. Really? <laughs> I'll tell this real quick. When G. Gordon Liddy was really young, a child, he had an uncle who was a, a federal agent. And he was visiting the Liddy's house. He took his... He used to wear a, uh, we call it a Starskin Hutch holster today, you know, the under the shoulder. Oh, the shoulder yeah. holster. Yeah, the shoulder yeah. holster. But back in the day, it was just a holster, mm -hmm. you know. And, and uh, the two. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So his uncle hung it on a coat rack, and then, you know, they were socializing, and they looked up, and here comes G. Gordon with the gun in his hand. <laughs> and, you know, he, he was real small. I mean, I forget how old he said he was, but the uncle jumped up, ran across the room, put himself in between, you know, grabbed him. And so, you know, so that's where that, you know, occurred to me that, you know, you, you never want to, you know, get harmed. But if you're trained, if you're doing something or you're there and, and uh, you know, you're the only one with the right experience, then you, you got to do the right thing. So I don't want to yell at them at first. I'm going to try to close the distance. Um, hand signal, hey, put, whoa, turn back right, the other right. way. You don't you want know, to startle. You, right, know, you want to just right. stir calmly. So, right, because because if you scare them and they're mm -hmm. that inexperienced to do what mm -hmm. they've done, right. they're boom, panic, the know. finger's probably on the trigger, even mm -hmm. though you've already, oh, yeah. you know, th that that takes mm -hmm. a while to, to, you know. And actually, um, I'll tell you uh, really quick, I had my kids at uh, a range one time, and uh, I won't say which one, <laughs> But Pete was there, and I had both the kids on the range, and he came out with this funny look on his face, and I'm like, boy, that's a funny look on his face. I, I've known this guy for Any a while. Any different from now or no? <laughs> no, just like, and I said, is there something wrong? You know, because I had both the kids in a lane, everything was going good. And he goes, see those people coming out of that room? They're going to shoot their first qualification for concealed, not concealed carry, oh. uh, 203? No, it was just uh, two thirty five. Yeah, two, two, yeah, five. yeah, yeah. Two yeah. Five. Security, yeah. right? Security, yeah. yeah. Security. Mm -hmm. The Liberty Bell people. I'm like, oh, we gotta go, kids. <laughs> you know, we're we're out. Yeah, I, I, I took I took the one pistol we were using that was actually my carry pistol. I made sure it was loaded with a full magazine. I holstered it. I cleaned cleared the other guns. I got them both to go out. I, he might they might have followed Pete out. Yeah. And then I grabbed everything and we, and we left. And I said, I'll see you next week. <laughs> that was it. So anyway, they were a little rough. Yeah. No. And but you know what? You got to start somewhere. They're learning. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. I don't fault anybody for. No, learning. I don't either. But you know what? I do. I do know from experience and training and stuff is. If you're brand new and you come out there and Wyatt Earp is two lanes down, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, you're mm -hmm. intimidated. You're going to be intimidated. You're going to be distracted. Yep. Mm -hmm. And God forbid you might try to emulate somebody who who is right. who wrong. can you know who can who can you know. And I'm not even talking about me. I, what are the uh, I can't remember the guy's name. He used to be a competitive shooter. He used to come in there all the time. He had those custom Glocks with the first time I ever saw a Glock with the top of the. Um, machined out so it was lighter. Oh, yeah, it's like the, the skeleton. Yes, and all that. Yeah, I forget like, his name. That's the thing now. Yeah, this was a long time I mean. ago. This yeah. is like when I first met you, and I forget the guy's name, but I, I was watching him shoot, and I'm like, uh, Who do you work for? He goes, No, I'm just a competitive shooter. I'm like, Freak, <laughs> <You know? laughs> stay away from me. <laughs> you know, probably Zach. They, they were probably he was one. good, he was and, and a nice guy. Yeah, Anytime I saw him there, size, which yeah. was actually a few times. I'm like, oh, what are you shooting today? Oh, come on up. Yeah. Dump a bunch of ammo on me. Great guy. Anyway. Definitely not sad. He's cute. Uh, ah! This guy didn't wow. see me. This guy didn't see me. Anyway. So, I'm gonna have to tap yeah, so don't yell. Time. Don't yell. Try to stop it. And then try to use it as a teaching moment. If you turn into one of those guys that they mm. mock on, online where you're like, what do they call them? Ranger Rob or something, <laughs> and you I know, like feel the strain. Yeah, yeah, like you're screaming yell and scream. Right, yeah. if you're yelling and right, <laughs> if you're yelling and screaming, it's just like when you were a child and yeah. and somebody did it to you. you that's it, you're done. Right. Right. It goes in and yeah. goes right and back. The, out. the problem with that is it's it's not about um, riding your skateboard wrong. It's about a really great piece of equipment that can be dangerous if not used correctly. So sure. right. anyway, there it is. is that yep. It? I'm good. I'm good. I think I've gotten everybody's questions. You're good? I think I'm all right. Okay, that's questionable. He thinks that's, he's all that's right. That's to be determined. Anything else? I got nothing. Well, Anything no. else, Gary? Thank you. I appreciate the invitation again, and it's great to be here. What do you got? You know Roger's an FFL now, right? No, I did not. There you go. Yeah. 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 Very Prince interesting. Okay. 
Ten of them, man. We'll link okay. up. Yeah, we'll link up. Good. 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 Okay. He gets and he gets equipped. All right. <laughs> we try. Yeah. That's what his dealing, wife said. We're dealing <laughs> with this. Ow. We're dealing yeah. with the same supply couldn't, issues. Couldn't. Well, I can't tell you how bad that hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> 2001. Two thousand one. Two thousand. Oh yeah, right. Got it real quick. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. All right, we're going to have some pizza. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. All right, Good everybody. to see you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, great questions. All right. And let's see if I figure out how this. Yep, we're ending. Bye, guys.